Welcome to a video on 8.2 graphing simple rational functions with h and k shifts. These functions, rational functions, take on the take on a ratio of polynomials. So we will have a polynomial on the top and a polynomial on the bottom of our function. And, and starting off with kind of the basic inverse variation graphs, uh, we see here we've got the graph of 1 over x which we can then generalize to a over x moving forward. Uh, for the graph of any constant over x, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals k. So that's going to happen uh, if, there's, if there's no shift up or down. It's always defaulted to the x-axis or at 0. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals h, which again, with no shift, defaults to the y-axis. So we have a vertical and a horizontal asymptote for this. The third point down talks about how graphs shift. So your a value is actually taken in the numerator, and then your horizontal, your left to right shift, is in the denominator, and your vertical shift is after the, the main operation or fraction, as we've typically seen. Domains for these functions, uh, for 1 over x is all real numbers not equal to 0. Uh, it can be generalized to all real numbers not equal to your horizontal shift. And the range is all real numbers not equal to your vertical shift or your k value. The parent pattern, you do want to come up with at least two points for each branch here so you can see how these go. Uh, and, and I recommend to do 1 over a. So whatever your a value is here within the top of this, you can kind of see how that'll work. 1 over a, a over 1, or 1a and a1, and then negative 1, negative a, negative a, negative 1. Those will give you, for the most part, integer values you can work with. And we call these graphs of these inverse variation types or, or rational functions uh, hyperbolas as they kind of uh, approach asymptotes in kitty corner uh, quadrants. So let's take a look at a couple of graphs and show you how to graph simple rational functions uh, where one will include an h and k shift. Our first example is just 3 over x equal to y. And as we take a look here, we can see we don't have any h or k shifts. If we had a horizontal shift, we'd see it next to x. And if there was a vertical shift, we'd see it after the fraction. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to sketch a horizontal and vertical asymptote here and set up my boundary. We just want to show where those asymptotes lie. So I have no shift to worry about, so I can move right to my parent pattern. So 3 is my a value. And remember our parent pattern we said, I typically like to do these in two charts. And my first one, I'm going to let x be 1, and then it's just the a value. So 3 divided by 1 just gives 3. And then I can go a1 for the next part. So if my a is 3 for x, 3 over 3 would give me 1. Those will give me a couple of points for one branch, but I need them for the other branch as well of my hyperbola graph. So I'm going to put in negative 1 for x, and 3 over negative 1 gives me negative a or negative 3. And then I'm going to use negative 3 for an input. So that's my negative a, and I should get negative 1 when I do that. So 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. I'm going to go ahead and plot these points now over 1 up 3. And I'm going to go over 3, up 1, then left 1, down 3, and left 3, down 1. And I just got to be careful. I want to try to draw a nice continuous line approaching the asymptotes each way here. So it's going to go up like that. It's going to come down and approach the horizontal asymptote. So there's one of my branches. And then my other branch extends in this quadrant, 3. to something like that. Okay, we've sketched our graph. Let's talk about domain and range here. Domain is going to be all real numbers not equal to 0. And the same is going to be true for the range. All real numbers, again, not equal to the asymptote value of 0. And that's how we graph a simple rational function. If you have a negative a, uh, in your numerator, you'll you'll see the branches in quadrants two and four, and uh, you'll you'll see that you, your parent pattern here within these won't give you two points per branch. It'll give you a point in each quadrant, but that's no big deal. 
uh, if you if you use these inputs, you'll easily find what you need to graph. So let's look at one now with an A and an H and a K with shifts here. So I've got a minus one. That's my horizontal shifts. Remember X minus H always. So this graph is moving right one. And then my K value is positive three. So it's moving up three. So I have a, a vertical asymptote now. I've got a vertical asymptote with my horizontal shift at X equals one. I've got a horizontal asymptote that is at y equaling three. So it's kind of like a, a sight gauge that's off sighted, I guess. We're going to make our horizontal asymptote here. It's just like we've done. Let's apply our shift right away. Kind of have our new origin. X equals one sets up right there. Okay, I know my A value, my A value of negative two uh, means that because it's negative, I'll see I'm expecting uh, points in quadrants kind of two and four, the top left and bottom right. And now since I've applied the shift, again, the advantage of using this method, go right to your parent pattern, and we've only got to focus about the negative two over the X. And we can do the same parent pattern we did in number one. So my two charts, X and Y, I can go one and then a, so my a is negative two, and then negative two and one. My other chart will have the negative one and the negative a, or opposite of a. So negative one for x, and you can see that y will be the opposite of negative two for positive two. And then I can plug a two in there and get a negative one. Okay, now this is important to know. These points are plotted from the shift of over one up three. So again, this is like our star or reference point for all the points we plot in our charts. That's been consistent in everything we've graphed. So from here, I'm gonna go over one, down two. Negative two, one, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go left two and up one. And then I'm gonna go to my second chart from this dot, I'm gonna go left one on the axis up two and back reset back to the shift and go right two and down one. Okay, and now I've just gotta draw my branches that approach the asymptotes in each direction, trying to make a nice continuous looking line. Easy to do freehand with a mouse. And there's our graph with our shift. Uh, if we take a look at the domain now, remember the domain is all real numbers, not equal to our H value. So we can't have any input equal positive one. So all real numbers not equal to one. And the range affects our K value of three. So we can have all real numbers that are not equal to positive three. And that's how we graph H and K shifts with these basic rational functions. Stay tuned because the next video we're going to have over 8.2 and into 8.3 is going to talk about what happens uh, when you do not, when you have a rational function that is literally more so binomials, trinomials um, divided by each other and how we can tackle that. Um, it's a little bit different than this process. So you're not going to see that nice H and K structure, but we're still going to be able to look at them and find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes as well as the zeros of the function and come up with some examples that work from there. So uh, check out the next video. That'll deal with the end of 8.2 and the start of 8.3 from our book.